Good morning. Our order of worship this morning is Divine Service Setting 4 on page 203. Our opening hymn is number 664. We rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The introit is printed in the bulletin. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord. Because he has dealt bountifully with me.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will. I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I came as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Lord before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten is not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We sing him 398.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Gospel which was just read. In the church here on earth, there are many remarkable works of art. And marvelous theology can be captured through this art when it truthfully depicts the deep truths of scripture and inspires the heart and mind. There's a church in Sweden, Sophia Albertina Kirka in Landskrona, that beautifully seizes on the divine reality that saturates our gospel this morning. And there's a painting above the altar, huddled around the risen Christ, there's a multitude of people in various stages of anguish. The painting is by a Danish painter called Karl Bloch. And he uses his talent to portray the Lord Jesus Christ in various episodes of his life. The title of the painting is, is Christus Consolator. This Consolator is one who consoles. And according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, that is an obsolete word. And it's true, we don't use that word much anymore. The word we use instead is consolation. And that has become almost synonymous with loser. Who wants to receive the consolation prize? The nice big ribbon that says, of all the losers, you're the best. When has a consolation prize ever consoled someone? When we play, we want to win. And in Christ, we are winners. He consoles us what we need. He consoles us with the forgiveness of sins. He consoles us with his grace and mercy. The painting shows a prisoner in chains looking for relief from all his sins. A cripple who seemingly has lost the will to live. A man so poor and skinny that you wonder where he can find hope. A widow huddled beneath the folds of Christ's garment, and an orphan looking out forlorn. And then there's the doubting Thomas type, who wrestles with his own skepticism. None of the figures in this painting are biblical characters. Instead, they are representatives of the countless people throughout the ages who have encountered Christ, the Consolator, the one who says, come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we find refuge in Christ. And this image in the Sophia Albertina Kirche pairs a twin reality that blends into one. There is the divine consoler who's welcoming the distressed. And then there's the painting itself hanging directly above the altar. Much like our picture here of the Last Supper. And that's precisely where our consolation is found. That is precisely where Christ, the Consolator, welcomes us. Where we find rest. Where he affords us the supreme comfort of his love, his forgiveness, his death and resurrection, his life, and his heaven. That painting belongs above the altar. This paint, this depiction here belongs they're right behind Christ's cross because that is where our consolation comes from. 
In the gospel today, Jesus strides into the sick room. Peter's mother-in-law is suffering with a great fever, according to St. Luke. A high fever. And in those days before antibiotics and aspirin, fevers were a genuine and immediate threat to life. The woman is nameless. And that's a surprise, but not an accident. Early church fathers say that Mark was closely associated with Peter. And so Mark would know Peter's mother-in-law's name. But he doesn't use it. And in not using it, he tells us something. Mark tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ attends to the anonymous, the forgotten, the nameless, faceless individuals who are in need of true consolation. This woman offers no prayer. She makes no overture toward the Lord. And yet he comes to her. He is the one who takes the initiative with us. He is the one to serve us, to extend life to us. And he does not grow faint or weary in his pursuit of us. He doesn't turn away when the road becomes perilous. He comes to us in the back rooms of our body when, while we are suffering with our own perilous fevers. And an exchange takes place. Sickness becomes his help. He takes what is ours and gives to us what is his. Sickness, demon possession, disease, sin, and death. He came to take it all. Not with a magic wand or an incantation, no presto change or mumbo jumbo. He takes us by the hand and lifts us up. The scripture says that when he did that, the fever left her. And more than one biblical writer tells us about that blessed exchange. Isaiah says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Matthew writes, he took our illness and bore our diseases. Paul tells us that Christ became poor with our poverty. He became sin with all of our transgressions. He became dead with the death of the whole human race. Jesus Christ takes what robs us of our humanity and restores us with his virtue, his blessing, his victory, his truth, his love. True consolation. Life in this world is very often not pretty. It's not comfortable. It's not fun. And people everywhere are looking for consolation. People hunt high and low for every conceivable way to cope with the troubles of this life. And they light on something and think that it will turn things around. A bottle, gambling, addiction, clothing, shopping sprees, travel, food, endless entertainment. And it's all vanity. Because looking for consolation in these things not only doesn't help, but very often makes the promise worth, the problem worse. It may deaden the pain temporarily, but it does not console. Our Lord brings us something more. He brings us what we need. And Jesus took the woman by the hand and lifted her up. That exact same phrase is used one other time in the Gospels. For Jairus' daughter, his dead daughter. And she too has no name. She lies in the back of the house, a 12 year old, lifeless. The situation was not one that could be easily handled by Jairus and his wife. But Christ, the consolator, moves directly to the child's side takes her by the hand and raises her up, saying, child, arise. Yes, resurrection is consolation.
the Lord's empty tomb is divine consolation for sinners who know that death is all too real. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. He served Simon's mother-in-law with his life. She received it and then she got up to serve others. And but what better way to understand your life? What better way to understand what takes place in this divine service and then takes place out there in the world? He serves you here. Christ the Consolator serves you through the word, the preached word that you hear. And he serves you here at this altar where he gives you his body and blood. He consoles you with his resurrection, forgives you your sins, and sends you out to serve your fellow man. The great fever of your sin is not on you anymore. You are forgiven. Your shame has been removed. Your guilt has been atoned for. You are embraced by the Father through the Son in the Spirit. You've, made, you've been made new in the blood of Christ. There is consolation in the highest order. On the cross, he bore the fractious weight of man's horrible deeds. And there was none there to console him. His sacred head, horribly wounded with grief and shame, weighed down. And in that act, and that sacrifice, our eternal consolation came into view. Jesus did it to bless you and to sustain you. He died. The Son of God Almighty died. To console you in whatever grief this world brings, the Lord of heaven and earth died. And receiving this consolation, we mount up courage to go forth from here and share that consolation with others. Courage, strength, fortitude, and hope is now ours by faith in Christ Jesus. And we shall run in this life the race marked out for us. We shall run and not be weary, for we have a goal in mind. Heaven is our home, and we will not faint, because Christ, the Consolator, is with us. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, unto life everlasting. Amen. our prayers this morning, we give thanks to God at the baptism of Leighton Jean Wonderlich last evening. We also remember Alita Evans in our prayers this morning as she has moved to the uh, Holiday Residential Home in Perryville, and also Alice Hecht, who is hospitalized with pneumonia. We rise for prayer. O oh God, the giver of all blessings, we praise you for the gift of the new life granted to Leighton in her holy baptism yesterday. Protect her and shield her from anything harmful in body and soul. And we thank you as you bring her into, brought her into your kingdom, 
Now keep her in her baptismal grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, look with favor upon your servants who are ill. Assure them of your mercy. Deliver them from the temptations of the evil one and give them patience and comfort in their illness. If it please you, restore them to health or give them grace to accept these tribulations with courage and hope. And, O Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for giving us the forgiveness of our sins. You revealed yourself in the Incarnation. You led the wise men to the manger of your Son, and you have brought us consolation that we cannot bring ourselves. We pray you to look upon all the nations of the earth and let your light shine among them. Move the heart of your church to remember and obey the high command to go into all the world and preach the gospel until every race and nation shall acknowledge you, the one God and Father of all, above all and through all and in all. Bless the missionaries in other lands who bear the lamp of truth into the dark places of the earth and prosper them in their labors and save us all from the sin of hoarding the mercies of your redemption. Make yourself known in these days to all the rulers of the earth and make them wise to do your will. Bless the president and the leaders and the legislatures of our country and give them all such godly fear and wisdom that amid all the shocks of change, your kingdom may not be shaken. Dispose the hearts of all the people to live righteous, sober, and godly lives. Remove not the speech of the trusty, nor take away the understanding of the aged from us. Give us grace who are here assembled to confess the faith in our daily walk and conversation. Help us to witness bravely to the light of your revelation. Prosper all good people everywhere, O God, and hinder such as imagine mischief and seek to undermine authority and order in our land. And to you who are able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. And him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabbath. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, 
and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the, to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 920.
Have a blessed week, and hopefully we'll have a little better weather next Sunday, and hope to see you all then.